G'day guys, in this video I'm going to go through the top tips of setting up your Culus Pro Spring DIY Cobra Punching Bag. I'm going to cover everything starting from the base and all the way to the Cobra head and everything in between, including settings like speed and reach. Now let's do this. <laughs> All the information that you need to do with this build, all the components, the step-by-step -step instructions, and all the various options of how to make different components and videos related to that will all be on a blog page on Culus.com related to the Culus Pro Spring. And I'll put a link in the description where you can find that blog page. All right, so you got your Culus Pro Spring. Where do you start? Well, you should start with the base. The base for this spring needs to be rock solid. By far the simplest and yet the most rigid way to set up a base for your Cobra bag is to bolt one of these flanges onto concrete. So that may be in your garage or you've got a concrete slab outside. I know not everybody will be able to do it, but for those of you who can, this is by far the most rigid way to do it. And you use these, what we call diner bolts or sleeve bolts. They go through, bolt it into concrete, and then you tighten them. The sleeves open up and lock it in place. Now, I installed one of these in the local gym, in the local fight gym, and it's been there for three weeks, fighters using it, people practicing on it, and it is still rock solid. The reason I use a one inch flange as opposed to three quarter inch is because it's more solid, it's wider, it's bigger than a three quarter inch flange. Then all I need to do is get about two feet of one inch pipe, screw that in, and then at the top, I get one of these reducers. It goes from a one inch pipe to a three quarter inch pipe, and then just a short section of three quarter inch pipe at the top to mount your spring. So you can pick the length of this to match your height. This will give you the most rigid solution of all. Now there are a couple of other solutions that I've come up with. One is a basically a base using an MDF board and your flange bolted onto it. Now I've got rubber feet underneath. There's a video that shows you how to make this. Now this goes well on carpet, it goes well on pretty much any surface. The only thing is you need to make sure you have at least 90 to 100 pounds of weight holding it down. Now you can use sandbags, for example, 425 pound sandbags. You can use weights, you can use water containers. I've got 22, litre, uh, 22 pound water containers that I use. I need four of those on there, and that makes for a solid base. Now, if you do have tiles, this is your option. For tiles, using suction cups, this platform here is rock solid. And it's the one that I made for a wall cobra. And it works really well for an upright cobra as well. Now the suction cup base is by far my favorite. In fact, right now I'm working on another version that uses just two of these double suction cups and without the need for the pipe saddles. It's super simple, super easy, yet super rigid. That's coming up in about two weeks time if you can wait for that. In the meantime, you can make one of these. All the instructions are on the blog, including a template PDF that you can get this shape and cut it out and then cut out this shape using a jigsaw. One major advantage of the suction cup base is that you can stick it onto a wall board, which is basically a chip board that I've screwed onto the wall and now I can stick a Cobra punching bag that is horizontal. Now if you're using a one inch flange on your suction cup base like I am, all you need is a reducing bush that goes onto that flange and that reduces from a one inch to a three quarter inch. And then you just need a small section of pipe that goes on there. Now this gives you a really nice setup for practicing uppercuts and hooks. Okay, next, let's look at a couple of options for your Cobra heads. By far my favorite is this one here using pull noodles. 
all you do is just split a pool noodles lengthwise in half like this and you've got long sections of these pool noodles you wrap them around your PVC pipe and you've got a longer section that's wrapped at the top of the smaller sections and that's it you just tape it all with duct tape it's all in the other videos you can check it out and see how to make this it's pretty straightforward but it also works really well I mean it is indestructible there's no bladder that's going to deflate it doesn't break uh, if there's any problems with the duct tape you just tape it back up no problems no issues it is super light and it is super fast now if you wanted a slightly heavier version a more solid version like this that's got a little bit more momentum to it. Next week, I'm releasing a video for this exact one here, which has a small plunger inside that is reinforced with a funnel, a plastic funnel. And I'll show you how to make that. That makes for a really rigid insert. It has lots of momentum, so it continues to move, so you can do your practice, your bobbing and weaving. This is a far simpler solution, easier to make. This is much more complex. And you need a pretty good speedball. Ideally, you want a leather speedball, genuine leather. Check this out. I used a vinyl speedball and it just fell apart after about two sessions on it. It doesn't work with vinyl. You need something pretty solid. Now, these speedballs, I'm going to make them available on Cueless.com. Genuine leather, hand-stitched with stitches that are just not going to rip. They're not going to come apart. This is what you need if you're going to build your own leather speedball cobra head. It's worth it. Finally, let's talk about the various adjustments you can make to your Culus Pro Cobra. Now, I've designed it so you could make those adjustments. Different people want to train differently. Some people want a faster cobra bag. Some people want a heavier top. Some people want a longer reach. You can make those adjustments with this spring. So, first of all, the top, the top section or the height of your top section will dictate the reach and also the speed. The longer it is, the further it will reach out to you, but it also makes it slower. So at this sort of height, if I look at how it traverses, it's got a nice long reach, but it's fairly slow. Now, if I wanted to increase the speed, I can lower this. Now it's got less reach but it's a lot faster the other thing you can do is if you didn't want to reduce your reach if you want to keep the reach fairly long you can lower the spring on the mast itself by lowering the spring on the mast that increases the speed without compromising the reach various ways you can adjust it also remember that when you adjust these the height gets adjusted so you may want to consider setting up height adjustable mast and that's in the video in the past you can check that out as well the link is on the blog as well so all in all you've got a number of adjustments you can figure them out for yourself in terms of what you like what you want to do how you want to practice do you want it fast do you want it slow do you want a far reaching do you want a heavier bag do you want a lighter bag you've got all the options there the key thing is Make sure you've got your base super rigid, super stable, and the rest will just fall into place and you'll have yourself an amazing Cobra bag. And I'll see you guys in the next video where I'll show you how to make this thing. <laughs>